during the referendum time of, well, 2016, the case of, well, what do you do about Northern Ireland? After all, it's it's the only land border we have with the EU. What do you do about it? Well, how do you solve these problems? And the response from the Leave campaign was, don't be silly. These are not going to be problems because, after all, the Leave campaign and position, you know what's coming next. My favourite quote from Daniel Hanan, a.k.a. the brain of Brexit, the man who was sold by the Leave campaign as if you've got a Brexit question, Dan's the man with the answer to that question. He went on air, and there is still video of this, and it, it, to be honest, it will should go down in infamy. Uh, these very, very quote should basically be simply this. What he said was, don't be silly. We are not talking about leaving the single market and customs union. Only a four would leave the single market and customs union. And many people, unfortunately, believed him. Because as we've said time and time again, leave new that it could not just go straight in with this crazy libertarian right-wing plan, which we are now seeing and being enacted in Parliament right now. Instead, they knew they had to go as wide as possible. Get as many people on board as you can, pass the vote, and it doesn't matter how many people end up changing their minds because you've already passed the vote. This is why Brexiteers never, ever, and are desperate to, not even now, try and revisit a Brexit conversation because they know that they've got a lot of very uncomfortable questions to answer. This is also why we are now starting to see Brexiteers argue with other Brexiteers. But before we go... Uh, into other stuff concerning uh, Northern Ireland uh, today. Uh, please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and a workstation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well buy me coffee. And as always, thank you very much to all those people who do help and support the channel that way. So, what has been going on? And what has been the quick version? Because there has been a lot of stuff going on, of course, with Northern Ireland since 2016. But we'll give you the quick Cliff Notes version. So forgive me if I do miss some, some stuff out. So Brexit comes along and Northern Ireland very, very clearly votes to remain in the EU. They know full well that you cannot have a hard land border between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. That is basically a non-starter. We signed the Good Friday Agreement, which basically says in a legal binding document in an international treaty that you cannot have a hard land border. And thus started the almost six, seven year, we're still at this point at the moment, conversation between Brexiteers of different stripes saying, well, where can we have this border? You can either have one in the island of Ireland, but any the Good Friday Agreement rules it out, so that's a non-starter. So the only place you can have it is essentially in the Irish Sea. But that means you are leaving one part, essentially, of the United Kingdom in the single market and customs union. And this has infuriated Brexiteers, because the last thing they want is a section of the UK that is left in the single market and customs union and outperforming other regions of the UK. And guess what happened? Northern Ireland, if you look, well, if you don't include London, basically is outperforming every single other region in the UK. Now, why is that? Well, it's the only region that's in the single market and customs union. And Brexiteers have been desperate desperate to try and stop that. Even now, they are sort of very much angry about it. But of course, there is another problem brewing in Northern Ireland, and that is, of course, the DUP, who are absolutely furious at the idea that they are now separate from the United Kingdom. And make no mistake, the ongoing problems and the current problems in Northern Ireland are solely the problems of the DUP. Indeed, at the last election, they well, they didn't lose, but essentially they came in second. And normally they would come in first, but they have lost a lot of power, especially Northern Ireland. And they are not happy. 
But because they are in the situation they are in and because of the way that sort of the Northern Ireland Assembly is structured, you need the DUP to be able to go into power sharing to essentially make sure that Northern Ireland has a government and stuff can essentially get done. But the DUP aren't happy with that. Indeed, they are not going to be happy with any deal going forward. They have said time and time again, we do not want a border in the Irish Sea. So even the the Boris solution, or what is now becoming the, the Liz Trust solution, the Northern Ireland Protocol, is still not going to work. But there has been some interesting movements of late, because the Northern Ireland Secretary could be doing something quite interesting. And of course, well, the DUP are certainly, as we said before, quite happy to go into chaos after chaos until they get their way. So we had this to say recently about this current eight-month standoff that has been happening. He said, I want to be very positive about the chances of getting a negotiated solution. We are working in good spirits and in good cooperation to deliver on the changes that are required for the protocol to be fixed or on the issues within the protocol to be fixed itself. We need to show some progress on that, he said. We are showing something pretty quickly, he added, in order to get the Northern Ireland executive restored. We need to move on. And as we've said before, what is happening in Northern Ireland is very, very technical. These are technical talks. And even the EU said, yes, there are problems in the Northern Ireland Protocol, but they aren't insurmountable. The two sides just need to sit down and actually talk about it. Because these are like really minuscule things, but they're highly technical. And I don't think that the Conservative government want to be talked into these technical things because, well, then if you're compromising or you're seen working together, which eventually benefits an area of the UK being inside the customs union single market, what does that say about the other regions which aren't performing as well? It says a lot. But he's also called, if it doesn't happen, to have new... Uh, a new election called on the 28th of October. Now, if that happens, essentially, we get a new election. And the chances are that you could very, very well get the same outcome with the DUP coming second um, and essentially still continuing to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Because as we've said, going right back to the start of this crisis, the DUP are prepared to have crisis after crisis until they get what they want. And unfortunately, this has been very, very much, um, a, they've been very much egged on, shall we say, by the Brexit ultras. Even Steve Baker, even though he, quote, apologised uh, this weekend to Ireland and the EU, he's been very, very buddy with the DUP, egging them on during all this time. Whether he will still continue to do that, I still think he will, because, again, Northern Ireland being in the single market customs union doesn't really suit his purposes. but. There is also the question of what happens to the Northern Ireland Protocol. Well, there is a bit of hope that if these negotiations go well, if they go well, and they can get it sorted, that essentially that pro the Northern Ireland Protocol that is being passed through Parliament essentially becomes redundant. It is just no longer needed. And hopefully that is what can happen. But as we've said, there has been a lot recently a lot of very, very big climb downs and a massive change in language towards how these Brexiteers are even reacting to Europe. So we have to acknowledge that there has been a somewhat climb down, and this is, of course, good. But what about their rhetoric and regards when it comes to Brexit? Will we start to see changes in sort of maybe asking for a close relationship and trading relationship with the EU? I, I, I doubt it. But we'll have to see. <laughs> we'll have to see what is going on. But this is certainly an acknowledgement by these Brexiteers that Brexit really hasn't gone as well as they were hoping. So, as always, uh, thank you very much uh, for watching. And of course, please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button on your way out. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and a web station link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can up Buy Me Coffee. And as always, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you all next time.